Hi, welcome to Edequity. Today, we are going to study the Hungarian method. Why are we studying Hungarian method? Because it is used to find the minimum cost in assignment problem. Oh, what is an assignment problem? Assignment problem involves assigning people to different tasks. Let's understand it by taking an example. Imagine the wedding season is at its peak. There are three wedding planners who offer three different services with photography, catering and decoration. But unfortunately, each wedding planner can offer one service at a time owing to their tight schedule. What can be the cheap and best way for a client to choose the services in order to spend the minimum amount of money possible? This is the matrix representation corresponding to the problem. The costs incurred for the respective services are mentioned where one unit is considered to be equal to 1000 rupees. So the client will have to spend 12000 rupees if he chooses wedding planner 1 for photography. Hungarian method can also be applied by considering the matrix as a bipartite graph where the vertices of the graph are partitioned into two sets and the edges are associated with the cost of each service. In our case, one set of the vertices will be of the wedding planners and the other set of the services that they provide. Also, it is a complete bipartite graph where every vertex of one set is connected to every vertex of the other set. Steps of Hungarian Method Step 1. Row Reduction Subtract the smallest entry in each row from all the other entries in the row. So this will make the smallest entry in the row equal to 0. You can see in the first row, the smallest element is 12. So in the matrix below, see that it is reduced to 0 when we subtract 12 from the elements of the first row. In the second row, the smallest element is 18. In the third row, the smallest element is 14 and in the same way, they are also reduced to 0 in their respective rows. This is the last matrix that we obtained. So the next step is column reduction which states that subtract the smallest entry in each column from all the other entries in the column. So this will again make the smallest entry in every column to be equal to 0. You can check for yourself. One question for you all. Can you think of a why we are opting for row reduction or even column reduction? What can be the basic logic behind it? Want to know the answer? Stay tuned as we'll soon discuss the reason. Step 3 is assigning zeros. Row scanning. Check if there is exactly one zero in a row. If yes, then highlight the respective zero or encircle it. While doing that, Cross the remaining zeros in the respective columns. If not, then skip the row and switch on to the next row. In the matrix on the right hand side, see that row 1 has two zeros, so we'll skip that row and switch on to row 2. Since it has only one zero, so highlight it or encircle it. And with that, cross the remaining zero in the respective column, that is column B. Now, even after scanning every row, if all the zeros are still not covered, we need to do a column scan. Column scan? Check if there is exactly one zero in a column. If yes, then highlight the respective zero or encircle it. While doing that, cross the remaining zeros in the respective rows. If not, then skip the column and switch on to the next column. See that in column A, there is only one zero. Highlight it and cross the zero in the corresponding row, that is row 1. Step 4 is checking the number of assigned zeros. That is, if assigned zeros are equal to the order of the matrix, then the optimal assignment is obtained. If the assigned zeros are less than the order of the matrix, then this means optimal assignment is not reached. You can see that the number of assigned zeros is 2, whereas the order of the matrix is 3. This means that the optimal assignment is not yet reached. And in order to get that, we need to apply the tick marking method. Step 5 is the tick marking method. It has some sub steps. The first step is step 5.1 Tick the rows which do not have any assignment. We will proceed by applying the steps in the matrix on the right hand side. So here observe that row 3 has no assignment, so tick that row. Step 5.2 
Examine the ticked row and tick the columns that have the crossed zeros. See that in row 3, column B has a crossed zero, so tick that column B. Step 5.3. Now examine ticked columns and tick the rows which have any assigned zero. In column B, row 2 has an assigned zero, so we will tick the second row. Step 5.4. Also if there is any cross zero in the same row, then repeat steps 5.1 to 5.3. But in our case, there is no crossed zero in the second row, so we will move to the next step. Step 5.5. Draw the lines across the unticked rows and the ticked columns. So this is how it goes. And here, the tick marking method comes to an end. Step 6 is finding the minimum uncovered element. It states that Find the smallest entry not covered by any line. Subtract this entry from each uncovered element and add this entry to each junction, that is the element at the intersection of the lines. So the minimum uncovered element here is 3, the junction element is 12 and adding 3 to it we get 15. These are the other uncovered elements and after subtracting 3 from each one of them, this is what we get. So this is the resultant matrix that we obtain. Step 7 is repeat the process from step 3 onwards. As we have seen earlier, step 3 is assignment of zeros. First, scan the rows one by one. See that row 1 has two zeros, skip the first row. Row 2 has again two zeros, skip the second row. Row 3 has only one zero. So highlight it and cross the zero in the corresponding column that is column B. After scanning all the rows, scan the columns. See that column A has single zero, highlight it and cross the zero in the corresponding row that is row 1. Column B doesn't have any unmarked zero left, so skip that. Column C has one unassigned zero, highlight that. This way, check for the number of assigned zeros and the order of the matrix. Observe that the total assigned zeros are 3 and that is equal to the order of the matrix. This means that the optimal assignment is now achieved. This is the original cost matrix. And hence, the optimal assignments are 1 assigned to A, 2 assigned to C and 3 assigned to B. The total cost can simply be calculated by adding the corresponding costs that is 12 plus 24 plus 14 which is equal to 50 of 50,000 rupees. Thus we say that the wedding planner 1 is being chosen to provide photography, planner 3 to provide catering and planner 2 to provide decoration. And this way the client will have to pay the minimum amount of rupees 50,000 only. So this is how Hungarian method is used in assignment problems. Yeah, that was quite informative. So coming back to the question that was asked earlier about row reduction, um, the reason is that we aim to select the minimum cost possible. So we choose the minimum element from each row and make it zero by subtracting it from all the other elements in the row. By doing this, we can easily verify that whether the assignment is possible or not for the simplest case, that is whether the minimum cost service can be assigned to everyone or not. And also by making all these values zero, it helps us to simplify other values too. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this content informative, hit that subscribe button and if you have any queries or suggestions, don't forget to write in the comment section below. If you don't want to miss any of our videos, click on the bell icon to get notified every time we come up with something new. Thank you.